The deserts of Don't Starve may come across as barren wastelands when in reality, they are the havens of this harsh world. They are home to dozens of resources, mobs, and even tumbles of weeds that can instantly grant happiness to some very lucky souls. Deserts are where it's at. But do you notice how I keep saying deserts as in plural? That's right, folks. In Don't Starve Together, we've got ourselves two of these dry biomes. But today, we focus on the hotter of the two, the Dragonfly Desert. Very rarely will a desert, at least the Dragonfly Desert, not be its own branch entirely which means mapping the edges of the world could very well lead to one pretty quickly, I imagine. So get to it. But why separate the two deserts, though? Easy. Both are very distinctive enough for their own good, but we'll get to that soon. For now, let's talk some rather familiar flora, yes? Spiky bushes here grant twigs similar to saplings, although they'll prick you for three damage each harvest. That is, if you ain't using a shovel on the way. One can actually relocate spiky bushes, and I would actually recommend doing so, as spiky bushes grow in winter unlike many of our other crops, and only take four days to do so. They're not bad as an alternative. Not bad at all. Spiky trees, on the other hand, are certainly not as entertaining. They don't prick you like the bushes, which is good. However, they will drop twigs all the same. But, annoyingly, have the only measly 20% chance to drop a log. They are not great. Cactus, however. Cactus would like a word with us. There are two different yet identical types. Oasis cactus and, well, cactus. What you see here. Picking either will hit you for six health. So armor is advised if picking a lot at once. But the best part about cactus, it grows and thus is available in winter. Outside of spring, it takes four days to grow. So take advantage of it just whenever you can, especially come summertime when all cacti, no matter which desert they're in, begin to sprout their cactus flowers. Beautiful, but prickly. Raw cactus is not so great. At minus 3 health, 12.5 hunger, and minus 5 sanity. But cooked cactus flesh is a fantastic sanity snack at 15 total a munch, along with 1 health and 12.5 hunger gain to boot. It's a fantastic food, given its availability if needed, and it's a veggie, so we can toss them into crockpots if we wish. But... Do grab them chips and eat some dip with guacamole. A recipe that actually requires cactus flesh, but it must be uncooked, mind you. Guacamole is not the best thing in the world at 20 health, 40 hunger, and zero sanity. But hey, it is a thing, and it's delicious. Cactus flowers, on the other hand, may be more on the interesting side. Alone, they restore 8 health, 12.5 hunger, and 5 sanity, which ain't a bad snack, to be honest but toss an array of veggies in with them to whip up a refreshing flower salad. These are quite efficient, especially come summertime, and they'll grant 40 health, 12.5 hunger, and 5 sanity along the way. Absolutely recommended. Furthermore, cactus flowers are needed to sew together a summertime dress item, the floral shirts. The problem is, you'll have to wait for your first summer to be able to do so regardless. But, the shirt has a passive sanity regen of 3.3 per minute, along with providing 240 points of overheating protection, the highest there can be for an item such as this. The issues lie, though, in the fact that you can achieve that very same heat protection elsewhere. Plus, wearing this negates backpack use. So, it's pretty cool, just not that cool. Especially when it spoils in 15 days anyways. 12 in summer, mind you. But it's time to talk a mob that doesn't get a lot of talk. Buzzards. Found during all seasons, actually. These rats with wings are common in rock and desert biomes, and do actually have some rather unique mechanics to them, albeit quite small. They circle ahead for meat, so placing one down and waiting to strike is certainly an option. But the key word is waiting. They are skittish beasts, so only go for a very quick attack once it begins the feast, 
or gets angry with you. Either way, they still might fly away from you. Do note that seeds can work too, only they will prioritize meat. And other nearby buzzards can and will potentially fight one another for these meals too. Buzzards themselves though, drop a single drumstick each time, potentially can drop up to two morsels, but usually just one there. And maybe even a crow feather. It's not bad, but it really is not that great either. But yes, buzzards do respawn, so take note of that. Next up, my arch nemesis, grass geckos. We may have a guide on them soon, simply because you guys keep asking for them. But in short, know that they're not guaranteed to spawn here, and sometimes are mostly in the mosaic biomes, but they will drop a piece of grass when startled, and will grow back their lost tails two days later. So don't just keep running about thinking that they're gonna drop another soon. You do need to wait a bit. The Dragonfly Desert is also home to Hound Mounds, and thus, hounds themselves. The mounds are typically clustered just as seen here, which makes this location very, very dangerous considering that each mound holds three hounds. I would not go guns blazing into these spots unless you know what you're doing, playing a particular character, or have the right skill and equipment to handle them. So I would choose to hire pigmen help or wait for another big bad to clear them easily for ya. Hound mounds require a beating, not a hammering, and will drop two bone shards, three hound teeth, and have a 1% chance of dropping a blue or red gem to boot. Keep in mind though, that special hound variants can also call these mounds home come certain seasons, so I'd be very careful there. If you want much more detail, then just simply watch the guide on hounds themselves. Speaking of bones and all that though, Literal bones can be dotted all about the desert, but usually do spawn near them hound mounds, so be very mindful there. Hammering these natural objects drop bone shards, but hammering the skull bone variant has a 50% chance to also drop a hound tooth, so there you go. And this should be very obvious, but what have you, we gotta toss it in anyway. Boulders call this biome home as well. And usually you'll find what are known as flintless boulders, but smooth and even the rare gold vein may show themselves near our hound mounds once again. You get rocks and minerals from them. Duh, but flintless boulders only grant rocks, so I would prioritize them if you want your rock efficiency to go up now. Tumbleweeds, things that can very well have their own video again considering that prospect of farming them is highly highly demanded. But today, all you need to know is that they'll only be in the dragonfly desert. So spotting them or the specific cactus mind you early can instantly tell you where you will be. But the biggest thing is what you can get from tumbleweeds. There is no point in running through all the possibilities as we'd be here all freaking day. Just take a look at this table here for all the info that you need. But just a heads up about tumbleweeds themselves, they do burn as they roll about, so watch out if you happen to be basing in this desert. Things can go ablaze very quickly. And speaking of, the guardian of this dry heap, the dragonfly. You'll know it when you see it, as her domain is surrounded by magma pools, crispy skeletons of lost souls, and burned trees of old. Oh, and there's also just a massive hostile fiery fly flown about that doesn't like us very much. Now, we ain't getting into her fully today, as that too would take far too long. So watch any of our numerous videos to truly learn how to make her fiery desert her cold grave. One last note, if you want canary birds, do yourself a favor and plop down a scarecrow. Typically, crows are the only birds around these parts, but this allows for canaries to land on this hot and dry turf. Actually, deserts and their turfs are the only place that these birds are going to be found. But there you have it everyone, the dragonfly desert and all the heat it brings. Personally though, I still enjoy the oasis desert more, and we'll get to that soon enough. But if you want some valuable resources, a challenging time, and just always the side of danger, this is your place to be. Thanks for watching folks, well wishes to all, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.